So my name is Suman. Um, has played roles across as a Scrum Master, uh, the Project Manager term you used uh, in, for in the Agile world as an Agile Program Manager, Principal Program Manager, um, uh, close to 17 years. So what I'm trying to do here is that um, I do understand a few of you have already seen or already exposed to Scrum or Agile. So for you, it is just a sneak peek into the other Agile methodologies which you are not dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And for those who hasn't seen, uh, you know, I mean, or not exposed at all, it's a simple primer. We can go, go through it together, right? Um, so across the next 20 minutes plus, I would like to spend time with you to walk, walk you through this simple agenda. And I hope you guys can take back a, a brief view on what is Agile and what are the different methodologies that exist across the globe. So Agile Manifesto. So I think back in 2001, November 13th, 17 people were following different variations of Agile development methodologies, you know, came together and they said, okay, fine. Uh, we have quite a number of methodologies existing now. Let's come together to create some sort of uh, you know, base rules um, or, or a manifesto which calls out what is Agile development means. So as you can see, I mean, this is from their web page. It's always people over process. The second one is of course, working product over documentation and third, customer centric and fourth, the agility, the agility to change based on the requirements, what customer wants rather than going for a long fall in terms of delivery. The question here is, um, does this happen on 2001 just like that? Was it an aha moment then? Or it has a, does it have a story to tell, right? So a brief history, what was happening all along? Uh, I think the history can go a lot more behind, but let me start with 1930 first, right? There was something called Plan to Study Act, uh, which was from uh, William Schumann. He was a physicist and a statistician. And what he was trying to do is that he wanted to ensure his products and process are, can be continuously test. So what he did was he planned for a test plan. He did the test plan. He studied what's the outcome of the test plan and he acted on it. And if you basically look at it, actually you can even stitch to 1620, Francis Bacon's uh, scientific method. So I don't want to start from there, but let me start from 1930. And Time passes by, right, 1994. So early 1990s, if you, if you really observe, I mean, we had all those green screens and which has been, uh, had an opportunity to migrate to those graphical user interface screen, which you guys see now. And on always uh, the advent of products like Power Builder, it actually gave a flexibility for the engineers to start creating prototypes, which was in there. So that, that sort of, um, gave birth to dynamic system development method. So till that point, there was another uh, methodology, which is RAD, uh, rapid uh, application development, was a bit constricting this progress. So if you look at it, we have technology grown from, you know, the green screens, the graphical user interface. We have tools to create prototypes, but the software methodology was in uh, catching up with the pace. That sort of gave birth to, you know, DSDM. Moving further, we have Scrum comes in uh, on 1995 from Jeff Sutherland. So before touching on 1995, um, on 1986, there was a write-up by two authors, uh, uh, a new product development. So what it spoke was that um, about few companies who is trying to bring in innovative product launches, mainly Fuji Xerox, uh, Honda for their engine section and uh, Canon for their cameras. So what they observed was that unlike uh, following a relay method, like uh, a team completes something, pass on to another team, and it goes as a relay method. They found they were following some sort of a, a rugby sort of method, right? Group of team walks together and they progress passing ball each other, right? And, 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 and it, that, that was the paper which was published in 1986. Now zoom into 1995, Jeff Sutherland, who actually partnered with Ken Schwabs to bring up Scrum as an official methodology, he was tasked to deliver a legacy launch for the company he was working for in six months. So he was trying to look around what can that be? And he was trying to bring in all the software development best practices across the globe, what he can read and three. And this page sort of stuck onto him. So what he did was he took that rugby approach and he sort of retained the name of that rugby, which is a scrum. And, and, and I, I can go a bit more detail in my upcoming slide, how it can stitch the, to the story, but the whole point 1995, Ken Schwab and Jeff uh, Sutherland together came together 
and said, this is the scrum and this is another software methodology which we can follow on. Time passes, uh, crystal clear. So another flavor of agile methodology. So uh, Alistair Cockbain was an employee of IBM. So during early 1990s, he was tasked to come up with a software methodology because IBM was trying to expand uh, a bunch of projects. So he started interviewing all the highly performing teams. So what he understood was that there is no standard methodology which makes the team win, but there are best practices which impacts the team to win. But again, that comes with the team size, the priority uh, of the work at their hand and the criticality what they're trying to deliver. So crystal clear is another framework, another way of looking at agile methodology that it is fluid in the sense it has ground set of rules, but based on team size and criticality and priority, you can pick and choose. Oh, so that sort of sums up on crystal clear. Moving on to extreme programming. Um, again, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So uh, we had Chrysler company who is trying to roll out their payroll project. Again, legacy to new transformation. They tried waterfall, uh, failed in a seven months. So they brought in Ken Stock who was like a, a consultant there. In his own words, what he did was he was spending on my think two to three weeks uh, completely in a meeting room with markers with few bunch of smart minds. What he did was he grouped all the best practices existed then. Something like pre, uh, pair programming, uh, test driven development, a bunch of things. And he carved out a methodology and he was able to launch the first pair or launch for Chrysler in for supporting 10,000 employees. Though the project famously on C3 was scrapped years down the line, not because of he couldn't deliver, it's purely because the vendor got changed. Further down, feature, uh, feature driven development, uh, sort of found not far from here. So Jeff DeLuca was tasked to launch a project uh, for 15 months with 50 engineers for a large bank in Singapore. So uh, he sort of came up with this methodology of FDD right? And which is another flavor of agile methodology. And I, I would be spending some more time on what does really mean in upcoming slide. But if you can look at it, all these different names was always putting customer in center, was trying across uh, lesser documentation, faster uh, to go live and, and whatever the agile manifesto was brought out. So all these people was the one who is behind coming in with the Agile Manifesto, which you saw at that slide before. So 2001 was a remarkable time where they came together, say that, hey guys, this is the minimum set of rules, what we see. And from there, it was more officially organized as a conservative forum. Moving on to whatever we saw as Agile methodologies, let me take a, a bit deep dive on all these. Of course, with time constraint, I won't be able to go in vertically down, but to the possible extent, what I've tried to achieve with you in the next upcoming slides is that what are those um, niche things or what are those unique things across all the methodology which we spoke can be um, uh, taken back to you and added to your toolkit for your own purpose because you might be using some other methodology, but uh, in one of my upcoming slides, I will tell that um, hybrid way of mixing methodologies is also something which companies and people are trying out and it has magical results. Moving on to our first one, as I said, early 1990s, where we were trying for graphical UI migration from green screens. So the thing which remarkable stand out then was something called prototyping. And if you really look at it, prototyping wasn't existing there, meaning there was no tool aspect, it was more around very hardcore way of doing it. So right now, what this method is like that, initially the team will come together to do a feasibility study across everything, right? Do we have people to do it? Is this the right project to do it? Do we have money to do it, right? Followed by business study where they assess the business. And if these two are done, we move on for creating a prototype, a functional prototype, which goes an internal circle across identification, agreeing and creation. And once that is done, it goes to the actual review build out, right? Uh, it comes for the much more closer design prototype what you're really going to build and it go for the implementation. So pretty much like a typical product life cycle, but the thing which made a bit of chain there was the prototyping part and few core te techniques which got attached to it. It has seven. I'm not going for the entire side because the latter five is, is, will be reflected in upcoming in here and there, but let me touch base on the first two, which has a unique flavors by it. Time boxing. 
so when they what they mean by time boxing is that whenever they agreed on something to be delivered they sort of put the budget and and time as fixed so the which is variable is the requirement part the third part of the triangle from a pmi perspective so the idea is that even if you run out of budget or time we are going with what we have and we, when i say we are going with what we have the assessment is that per pareto principle 80% of the project comes from 20% of the requirement so whichever is not has been built or prioritized on time it is not relevant so it is not that it is an unfinished product it just that you are building the right set which needed by consumer again this concept was way to in 90s and sort of touches with our current way of product backlog uh, prioritization which ha happens in scrum moving to the second technique again mosco and and pretty much this this technique we use even in our e-commerce purchase mosco stands for must have should have could have and won't have right i mean it, it's a simple way of looking at a requirement and you're bucketing it and based on the budget you have mostly you'll go for a must have one and maybe should have one and that's it so this sort of helped in prioritizing what needs to be done from a delivery perspective so dsd overview you clearly touching on what are the advantages and disadvantages which we so not running through the entire list um, since we have slides to cover but advantage is that you always fix at the time so project delivered on the time but the what is the biggest dis disadvantage the biggest disadvantage is always inhibited the developer creativity innovation quotient was way too low in this method because and again if you look at that time the theme was all about how we can migrate faster so the sdm is still there now which has been used in a way to it's still used but in 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 different way they are re reinventing their own they have the latest manifest of them there and getting launched in 2014 so few companies still follow dsdm in a very very minor level moving on to the next one which is scrum i think the the famous kid on the block right every uh, everyone thinks about scrum and thank you we could also to touch on that so this is a brief view of what are the roles involved and what are the ceremonies Uh, uh which is involved in a typical scrum the success of scrum was that the methodology which we just spoke earlier and the methodology which we'll be speaking now uh, after this always had a gray area around people process and it was all about the mindset right i mean you need to have the right set of matured mindset because agile is a mindset if not we will be having um, uh, that mindset not getting stuck to people so we have to give them as a rules or regulations or whatever that process we can follow scrum won that battle so that's why scrum is sort of been accepted and and it, it not only that factor it has a lot of other advantages but the heart of the scrum is sprint the so sprint is a repeatable process of building product so giving a quick snapshot product owner who acts as the internal customer for the company works with the end user if i take a simple analogy of the pela app the the product owner might be understanding or trying to interview customers uh what could be those features which uh, you know that that customers are interested in and he'll bring that in his product backlog and can be anything it could be that pela started with um um uh you know a bit of utility payment now it has much much advanced including with pay now but the whole point is that they all start with a list of features which product owner knows is good to have but you can't deliver everything one shot right so he discussed with his team on his planning meeting on what we i can do or we can achieve in one sprint right which will feed into the current sprint backlog and during the execution of sprint uh, there are few activities you like go through but the uh, the output is the finish to work on his priority task so during his execution he has a daily scrum with his teams which is daily scrum meeting it's nothing but a quick stand a quick status meeting to say what i did right what i'm planning to do is there any impediments for me stopping me from my progress for the, the next day and product backlog refinement is nothing but the team and product on a come together on what could be the next set of uh, 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 requirements which you should see as a priority to getting delivered a simple view of scrum and the most widely used uh, agile methodology currently in the world which i can touch on the numbers in a few few slides later going on again with advantage and disadvantage uh advantage wise um if you look at scrum has a lot of ceremonies bringing the team together right from sprint planning daily scrums retrospective or even backlog grooming so there is a lot more interaction happening so more motivation it's more of team backing each and either and the scrum also enabled a lot of good tools altasio jira or rally to sort of bringing the entire scrum model in a visual view 
So it sort of always enable the transparency and the ambiguity of, oh, I need to really wait to see what Agile has to build on a sprint to sprint basis it was sort of balanced by these set of good tools. What are the disadvantage part of it? Disadvantage part is that again, Agile is a mindset and it's sort of really driven by the maturity of that mindset. The balance of what needs to be done on a project versus the innovation side or the agility factor is always a, it's always a risk. So if I take a regulatory project, which comes with a fixed D day, how much agility or how much forward planning you can do. So that, that, that's always restrict that part. And always, again, I mean, the second bullet is slightly controversial because it really depends on team to team and company to company. So there, before this, there was predefined QA role and engineering role, which was followed by a lot of teams or a lot of companies. Once this Scrum came in, uh, I think the, as part of transformation, uh, QAs were said, okay, fine. Um, maybe you should do, do the engineering hat because when you do the velocity of, uh, which is the how much a, a team can uh, deliver, they sort of take a, it as engineering plus QA. But there are teams or there are companies which still follow uh, engineering plus QA being separate, but there are a lot of companies which I know personally, especially technology companies which have combined this role. So that's is sort of the scrum view. Crystal, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much you have uh, ex being exposed to Crystal's um, methodology. It's, it's, it's 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 slightly um, even though it is there in 90s, but didn't get wider um, uh, acceptance uh, for the reason which I'm going to tell now. So the good thing about Crystal is that it is not a fixed methodology like Scrum, right? So if you have a minimum of four engineers or five engineers, I mean there are certain ceremonies which can become overhead, and Crystal doesn't say that. So what it says is that you have to do an assessment on how many numbers are going to be involved in that project. And Crystal, uh, basically, Alistair Cockburn always believed, who was party to that Agile, uh, Agile Manifesto, which was written, saying that irrespective of the project type, you always need to look what type of project is, how many people is going to work on it, what is the cr criticality of it, and, and you need to take some amendments here and there. So if you look at towards the bottom, the way Alistair has sort of compartmentalized this project is, these are the number of people you have, and this is the comfort, uh, discretionary, essential money life, which I'll give a quick view. So if there's a 40 days man, uh, man day project, which based on your high level estimation, what you're going to look at that are the engineers comfort enough to spend that extra hours, if at all it is required to finish by some aggressive day. Do you have the required money to kick off? Do you have the required money to finish it off? Is the project life cycle is something which we can play around? So you sort of assess this ahead of the uh, project beginning and, and you bring in all those agile way of uh, shorter, shorter sprint. So basically it, it won't have a standard sprint like Scrum. It really depends on the project size, the sprints can be small or short, but the methodology remains same uh, from that aspect. <laughs> Moving on to advantage and disadvantage again. It ensures frequent deliveries because um, it is tied to the type of work it is doing. It doesn't, so larger organizations, sprints are sort of standard defined. So I, I know companies like 20K employees or 30K employees, they'll say, okay, fine, this is two weeks of sprint. And that is spanning across different org structure and they'll be having their own deliveries. So whatever you see as amazon.com, it's not a single team's delivery. The, the, the checkout button will be part of one team. The, the, the review comment section will be part of another team. So all these team has to come together for one page delivery. And that's also an agility part. But if you're told you bring in a um, crystal part where teams are building their own sprint level at their pace, the overall delivery can be impacted. And that that's what sounds as the biggest disadvantage that the variant in the same company can bring in. And it definitely won't work in with, TV, if at all, teams are scattered through different areas. Um, uh, and especially currently in our world, we have majority of companies geographically located sparsely. So it becomes tricky if people are not together. So that sort of sums up the crystal methodology. Moving on to extreme programming, which I said one of those agile methodology which was developed by developers for developers. So the idea is how um, there are a few best practices like pair programming where two people program together, right? And one person program, another person continuously audit and can help in editing or test driven development, right? Even before you write a code, uh, you actually have test case written and you continuously test the whatever you are building on it. So, and, and this practice is not net new. Uh, even what I've read is during 1960s for one of the project in NASA, uh, they have done this even during, but they never had a fashionable name then, 
but that was an aggressive way so extreme programming why the name is extreme programming is that all the best practice they took and they took it to an extreme level pair programming programming to at the core test driven development test driven at to the core so that's why sort of the name extreme programming uh, quickly touch basing on advantage or disadvantage again it's it's driven or, or it's built by developers for developers so from a from a code perspective it is highly efficient it is the agile methodology which is more agile than any other methodology currently existing because all those agility way of uh, uh, best practices in the code development is currently getting used and even from a talent development perspective uh, there are a lot of overlap between the senior engineers and junior engineers because of this extreme methodology which i mentioned so the talent development is much more uh, it happens very fast what are the disadvantages the challenge is that uh, we focus a lot on that um, you know best practices in terms of bringing in from a coding perspective and it and 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 the overall design if at all we are dealing with a, a heavily huge program can get lost in details and and again this framework may not be the best way if the team members are working across a uh, different geographical area right so moving on to the next one which is the ftd which i said jeff de lucas work with a la singapore bank on 1997 we'll spend a bit detail here because it's 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 a good concept you know and 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 one of my favorites too so the idea here is it sort of follows the object oriented model uh, which was there uh, for some time so what jeff did was that rather than deep diving into a business all of a sudden right he sort of created an object which can be a uh, based out of uh, be, which can meet the business needs a model to business needs right so he created an overall model and be, and and that sort of is in a very high level it doesn't go to that nativities of what it really require mainly uh, from a ui ux perspective does this module need to cover transport uh, uh, you know uh, food delivery and everything or what is that business model we are which we are trying to achieve then it sort of broke into what are those feature list right which can be seen as user stories in scrum or what is a shippable product which i can think about it and this feature list uh, the team try to plan around this feature list and they design by feature and they could be they could have their own aha moments that oh fine maybe since i'm using building this capability um, the the uh, for example if i take coinbase and as an app where you do kyc via face uh, the face id can i even use it for other transactions right that those are the finding which you do while your development which will feed back to the overall model so this is more of the modeling structure and and it actually brings in a lot of values in in bigger companies and especially companies like which are kicking off uh, as startups or anything but again right like any other methodologies um, will give a quick view into the advantage and disadvantage uh, from an advantage wise since the team is sort of building the the object model based on the entire business and they have a good grip of it and and once the models are in the feature list are in you have a good grip on what are you going to deliver so it doesn't have that overburden which few people see in scrum as there are a lot of meetings happening it works with large scale uh, teams very very seamlessly but what are the disadvantage of course it's a, it's not a great investment for smaller projects uh you won't even have such uh, uh you know bigger models if at all if it is you are dealing with a smaller project another thing is that uh, uh you know a lot more issue is that if at all you are transferring an existing application a legacy application right it becomes a bit tricky because the it's already done you need to actually create a model out of it and it's not a smooth transfer so you may need to start over from the work from the ground up so from a existing application enhancement it may not work so ftd always is good if at all you are starting net new or you are coming up with something i mean whatever you see as jassy products here now that, that it's a good candidate to use ftd uh, to starting from day one onwards when you want to kanban uh, so kanban um, wasn't there during 2001's time when the agile manifesto was written it's sort of new kid in the block 2007 um so kanban is more of a lean uh, uh, way of managing agility right so as you look at it kanban has main three things one is the visualization how i can visualize what is in there for me for the day right second is that a very strict emphasis on work in progress unit so you look at it this work in progress unit is sort of kept very constant and it is not you, uh, you can't simply add you can simply it's like a pipe you goes in it comes out as a product and this area is totally fixed 
So if I do the same analogy of product owner um, uh, from Scrum, I mean, maybe I use customer here. These are the ideas or basically the product, um, um, uh, the, the product requirements, which get pulled into the system, which goes through the entire typical way, which has its own sprints, but come out. Uh, so one touch base on this Kanban is that compared to scrums, if you have operational activities, right? batch runs or whichever doesn't require a lot of customer interaction, but you're doing operational activities, tax file update or, or system refresh. This helps in because it, it, it just brings in, uh, you know, a lot more linearity to whatever work it is happening. That's basing on advantage disadvantage again on this. So advantage is that great visualization, you can break down and it has a continuous way of delivery. Disadvantage is that um, Kanban board, um, it has tools, but uh, it gives a visual view always. So if at all it is not heavily updated, it gives a totally wrong view. And there is not time frame specific in Kanban. Right? It's just a free flow of a pipe. So from a from an strategic project execution perspective, maybe Scrum fits in a bit more, but Kanban is lean, simple compared to Scrum and not that complex from a process perspective. Right, so um, I'll move on to a bit of insights from the market across methodologies. Um, so based on the uh, this year's, like there's a, uh, you can refer to stateofagile.com, which brings in what happens from agile world, right? Uh, all the methodologies, what is we, we went through, the 58 percentage across the globe use Scrum. And this is based on interviews or surveys done across the globe um, uh, of various roles and various capacities. And, and it, it this has both IT and non-IT sector. Um, the, the, the immediate next step, if you see it's Scrum ban, and, and that's where I started my conversation in the beginning. So Scrum ban is like a, a, a hybrid between Scrum and Kanban. So we, we have a lot of good methodologies which ensures or which keeps to the point that you are delivering project by picking and choosing whatever is best across all the methodologies. So it's up to you. Right, so, and, but at the same time, there's no point in going totally out, then you're also at loss. So there are proven hybrids, which people are trying out and Scrum Band is one of it. And, and, and this is where it stands, where Scrum is being the favorite across for its own way of the way they have defined the process, people and tools. And the next insight is more of an FYI that, um, yeah, these are the favorite uh, uh, activities, which teams using various methodologies thinking, which brings into them daily standup, which comes in Scrum and also in few other methodologies. It's more of the status update across each other. Retrospective, uh, from, my, from my personal experience, one of the important one to have, it's more about looking back what went wrong, and, you know, what went good and what can be continued, start, stop, continue. Uh, sprint and iteration planning, what you plan for the next upcoming sprint. Iteration review is all about what can be done for the next upcoming one and short iteration, which varies from market to market, business to business. There's no standard scale for it.